Hi, Jamie. How long have you been keeping ants? 안녕하세요. 개미 연구소입니다. 오늘은 처음으로 외국 개미 브리더 제이미의 인터뷰를 담아 보았습니다. 해외에서도 개미 키우기에 대한 열기가 대단한데요. 그중 저도 활동하고 있는 호주의 한 개미 키우기 모임이 멤버인 제이미를 인터뷰해 보았어요. 그가 키우는 개미와 그의 개미 사육장 소개 그리고 개미를 키우게 된 이유까지 호주에서 개미를 키우는 사람들과 과연 한국의 브리더들의 어떤 공통점과 다른 점이 있는지 끝까지 봐주세요. So I started about 18 months ago, and maybe just a little bit longer than that. Um, after my wife was attacked by a green ant, and I started investigating why she uh, why she got such an allergic reaction. And yeah, and I sort of got hooked by probably Ants Canada. Okay. Uh, and um, yeah, it's been. I've been falling ever since. Now I can see green-headed ants here. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, even though my wife is allergic to them, I find them intriguing. Um, these I actually dug up from the backyard in an, an attempt to actually rid our backyard of green-headed ants for my wife. Okay. Um, and yeah, so these were one of my first nests. Uh, the beauty of the Radiptobanera, the green-headed ants, is that you don't actually need a queen because they're gamagate. So I dug them up, I crossed my fingers, praying that I'd got the gamagate and I was lucky enough. And yeah, one of, one of them was indeed fertile and has been quite happily populating this setup. Yeah, so that means like they don't require the queen to keep running there. That's cooking. correct. That's correct. I can see their cocoons. Yep. Uh, there's, they, they move those cocoons around pretty much every day, uh, depending on the weather. Uh, I've not seen the queen or the gamma gate because I'm pretty sure I don't have the queen. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen the gamma gate for months now. I think she's probably either down the bottom or down the side where you can't see. And I've not seen any um, eggs, but obviously by the, the number of pupae that are there, they are quite frequently um, getting replaced. So she's obviously going okay. Wow. Uh, this nest setup is really amazing. Like, can you introduce how did you make it and why? In this well, uh, I, I toyed with a few ideas. I wanted to actually see them digging. I'd, I'd carved a couple of um, Waitong nests and that was great. But what I really wanted to see was I wanted to see them digging. So originally these guys were literally just in a box with sand okay. and they dug in the sand but I couldn't see anything inside the container. Um, there was a little bit up against the side but but I was just intrigued. I was like okay I, I know you can make these, you can probably buy them but they're nowhere near big enough so um, I got a bit of the scrap um, aluminium tubing that I had lying around the C channel here and just, yeah, just sort of hacked it together. It actually turned out much better than I thought. Um, yeah, it looks, looks amazing. We can see they they digging the channels and why the colors are different. Ah, uh, right, okay. So what I found is that uh, I had this preconception that once an, a tunnel was dug, that tunnel would stay oh. but as it turns out they they change the tunnels every other day and what you can see where the dark patches are is a tunnel that they filled in hmm. um, and they're they're all over the place um, some 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 of the the tunnels have been filled in some are just open and nobody uses them anymore uh, they it's interesting to try and work out how they get the idea to move a tunnel. Like what is the impetus to move a tunnel, create a new tunnel, create a new chamber. Okay. Um, I, I've, I mean, all I can do is watch. Mm, that's very interesting. 
I can see there is a tube connected to different container. Yep, so this is the Outworld. Um, this design of Outworld, I think I got from Rob J. Ants on, on YouTube as well. Uh, it's a great little setup. So the bottom is actually tile grout. Okay. So mix up tile grout and then set it in the bottom, sprinkle the sand on. I put in a few bits of wood, a few rocks, um, just to give them a bit of a, an outworld. So it, it's also the easiest way to feed them. So I've got a couple of flat rocks. Yeah. So you can see the honey on this yeah. one. It's a bit of apple. Um, I, I'm probably like many other ant keepers and just trying new things to see what they like. Um, they do love the, the live animals though, the live insects, um, whether it's roaches, mealworms, a cricket caught in the garden. Okay. Yep. Are they your favorite ant, ant colony you have? Or? It's my favorite setup, okay. but not my favorite ant. Okay. Uh, my favorite ant is actually, I do actually have the, my favorite ant, um, and it's the um, Campanotus chalcius, um, which was actually gifted to me from one of the other members oh. of the team, and one of the group. Um, and I'm really quite happy with them. These were actually saved from a log uh, that was being, uh, being uh, cut into pieces for a playground. Oh. So these were saved. Thankfully, um, my friend managed to catch the queen and has passed them on. And she has, she has got now, I think about a dozen pupae. Uh, last time I counted, it's a bit hard to see where she's where she's currently sitting in the test tube. And um, I'm crossing my fingers for some some new new ants to to be uh, to come out of those. Do they also eat the same like green head ants? They I look I feed them the same, so they get honey and uh, again probably mealworms. But I I don't know, I actually don't know they. They do use the, the mealworms and uh, feed that to the pupa. I've actually seen that. Uh, but I, I don't see them enjoying the honey as much. I've still got to, I guess, investigate a bit further as to uh, if I can find a better food source for them. But they it's are protein. They are. And I think that's the protein from the mealworms. Is it your first first colony? Oh no, your your first colony was green-headed ants. Actually, the first colony, yes, yeah. the first colony was the green-headed ants. But my first ant that yeah. I caught, first queen, was actually an iridomermic species, and I've still got her. Um, I actually caught two at, at that on that particular day down in Denmark, yeah. uh, Easter two years ago, and she is doing really really well. Um, I wouldn't even want to hazard how many. Uh, Wow. How many ants there are in her colony? Her nest is actually a little yeah. empty now because I've just fed them some honey. Wow. So they are all, and there's a larger number of them surrounding the honey, which they, they love. These guys, or ga girls I should say, um, are really efficient. When I give them food, they, they are very good at taking it apart and, and bringing it back to the nest. And as you can see, they are prolific. There are so many pupae in there. I'm seriously considering having to create a new um, habitat for them because they are going to quickly outgrow that one. Did you make this nest yourself? Yes, yes, wow. I, I carved these um, just simple carving out of white on with a bit of perspex over the top and sponge. It's, um, mm. it's quite a, a regular go to for ant keepers. Wow, I can see. Uh, has some wet area here. Yep, so um, ants need a, a moisture gradient. Yeah. So, um, yep, the, the, water, the moisture that the sponge provides gives them a choice about where they want to put their brood and the eggs. Um, obviously, they've got their own requirements for what, um, what humidity they require for each. So, uh, yeah, so that's what, that's what the, um, the moisture is there for. It's amazing. I think I have the same species in my test tube. Um, has three three queens, 
Yes, I think, yeah, I think you can actually have multiple queens. Wow. Um, I don't actually have any multiple queen colonies. Um, all of mine are single queens. I think that might just be because I've got so many test tubes so I can put one in oh. each. <laughs> Thanks for your test tube, by the way, next oh, yeah. time. 